All right, welcome back, everybody. This is going to be a recap for this Friday. It turned out to be a really, really good Friday, and I want to go through some exciting things here with you. We'll get into a little bit more depth on my uh, selection. Um, but before we do any of that, if you are enjoying these recaps, please be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. And, of course, if you hit the notification bell, you'll be updated as soon as I release them. So, anyhow, I wanted to get this one out a little bit early. It looks like it's going to be a busy weekend for me. Starting off with RTY, the Mini Russell. This is the only indice I traded all day. I didn't do anything on the Mini NASDAQ. E-Mini S&P, even though I did have some setups, or the Mini Dow. Uh, and, of course, you know, on Fridays, uh, I stay away from gold and crude and some of the other futures. But uh, I've been kind of lightening up on those anyway during the whole week. So... Uh, one trade, um, this is, once again, this is pretty much textbook on uh, one of my patterns that I teach, and that's called the pairing pattern. So we did have a pairing pattern coming in by on the Mini Russell. This was given out in the morning, uh, about 30 minutes, no, actually about a, uh, yeah, about 30 minutes before the opening bell. Came in around 05, 905. And it was a pairing pattern buy and actually didn't hit that target until it took off right after the opening. And uh, I did have a profit target up here. Went ahead and I took my little profit and got out. Didn't make a whole lot of money, but where I did hit it uh, was on the stocks. And I want to go through that process a little bit so you get a better idea on the beauty of my method, and once again, remember, this thing has been, I've been trading this, and I've refined it over the last um, 36 years now. I've been trading it for uh, 40, 41, and uh, I've been trading this for a long, long time. And so um, the whole thing is uh, I've been making it simpler and simpler process, all right? And the reason for that is the simplicity typically means profitability, all right? So the less decisions you have to make, the more likely two things. The more likely it's going to work, number one, uh, because you're not putting a lot of constraints on the market, all right? Uh, and the other thing, you're more likely to stick to it, all right? Um, and so anyway, let's go through that process a little bit. And let's pull up some stocks here. All right, so first thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at CRKN. Now, starting off this morning, if you were with us this morning for that first 30 minutes, uh, I started off my very first trade of the day was on uh, VFS. I'll go over that after we go over CRKN. Uh, you know, I came in overnight uh, in GNS and JDST. I added a little bit on JDST. I did get out of JDST. I did get out of GNS. Made a little profit on that. We'll show you that here towards the end of the video. Um, but I did have some really nice setups on VFS and CRKN. So I want to start off with that. Now, talking about the process. So basically, it's a very, very pretty simplistic process that I use. All right. What I'm looking at is I have really just three things that I look at in the morning. Number one is I have my scanners. I have several scanners. And I am looking for the stocks that have the most interest, okay? So I'm looking at volume. I want to see a lot of these stocks that have a lot of volume and they're moving higher, all right? That's the first process. So I usually get a pretty good list. I maybe get a list of about 20 good stocks. And I go through all the parameters on how I set up my scanner in my videos. But right now... Um, I'm typically going to get around 20, maybe 15 to 20 stocks every morning that I'm going to start off with. And then what I'll do is I'll go through each one of those stocks and I will start to look at them and I'll see if I am getting one of my four patterns or more getting set up. So let's say, for instance, CRKN was one of those. I come in and I look at it and I look at it and I say, wow, okay, so... This particular stock is going to be one I'm going to try to trade because I see an HF2 getting set up, okay? And then I run Einstein, and Einstein, as I look at Einstein, Einstein will start projecting these levels, okay? So 
once I get triggered on a pattern, once again, I'm only looking at four different patterns, all right? It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple to find these patterns, all right? The way I explain them, and that there is a process, but it's not as hard as you think it is because you're only looking at four different patterns. So you're not looking at a ton of information. So anyway, so once that sets up, then Einstein will come in and it will run his calculation and it will give me probabilities, all right? It will tell me every single one of these lines here that you see here, all of them have over 70% probability of hitting, okay? Um, and the thing is, is, the further out I go, the longer it can take, which kind of makes sense, the longer it could take in order to hit one of these levels. Now, sometimes right after the opening, it explodes and goes through all of them, you know, in a flash. Sometimes you have to hold on a little bit longer in order to catch those really big moves. Now, if you would like to learn a little bit more about uh, the pattern, how I use it with Einstein, and a little bit more details about Einstein, stay tuned to the end of the video. There should be a link there for a video I did a month or two back, and I talk a little bit more about it, so make sure you watch that if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the whole idea behind the patterns in Einstein. All right, so this uh, CRKN was pretty classic. I went ahead and I really like getting into a market. And you've heard me, if you've watched my recaps, you know I like to get in right before the opening. All right, hopefully hold my own because a lot of times what's going to happen is it's going to explode after the opening. Now, we didn't get a huge explosion. A lot of it came in right before the opening, but that's fine because I got in right here just as this was beginning to take off. So I caught a really nice move on CRKN. And I know a lot of people were watching CRKN today. So, um, but I did get a nice little HF2 setup. I had uh, one, two, three, I had four levels all set up. And I was really waiting to see what it was going to do after the opening. It did have that initial push, took out the high, and then it started pulling back. And I went and got out and made a nice little profit on CRKN. But the big one was on VFS. VFS. All right, so let's take a look at that real quick, too. And then we're also going to take a look at what I was looking at in terms of order flow which is real important because order flow is going to help us uh, in making a decision of do I want to go to the next level or do I want to go ahead and take my profits now. Now, of course, it's not perfect, but it, a lot of times it will give you a pretty good indication of whether the market is going to continue to go higher or not when you try to catch these bigger moves, these parabolic moves. You'll see that here on uh, VFS. Let's switch over. All right, here we go. Here's VFS. So let's take a look at a couple things here. Okay, so... Uh, I initially didn't even want to uh, trade it. I was talking about it this morning. I was looking at VFS. I said, eh, probably not going to get into it. But I kept back, coming back, looking at it, looking at it. And uh, and then finally I said, you know what? This thing looks like it's going to really take off. And I'll show you exactly why I decided to get back into uh, uh, VFS. Now, VFS, I traded a few days ago, did very well in it. Uh, we are getting pretty high here on the stocks. I typically don't like to trade these stocks up here, you know, in the $50 range. But, man, everything was just setting up for this thing to really just take off and explode. And so I got in around 9, 9, I think it's like 9.13 or something like that. And um, so what I was looking at is looking at a couple things. First of all, I was getting this set up over here. I was getting this buying pattern set up, which... One of the patterns of the four is called pairing. So I was getting a pairing pattern setting up. Fantastic. All right. Second of all, when I came and I looked at order flow, I'm looking at this little, this column right over here. All right. Didn't have a whole lot of selling going on up here. All right. I mean, yeah, you had some up here. But because of the big interest in this and the volume this morning, I figured this was going to get all gobbled up. And it did get gobbled up. And it didn't take long for them to take out all these sellers, all right? So I had a lot of things going for me on this trade. That's why I decided to go and get into it, all right? So let's take a look, and let's see how I play this out. All right, so I went ahead and I entered my buy. I had a pairing pattern buy, all right? So right after the opening, once again, 
This is the trade, folks. Try to get it on these. Love seeing patterns setting up right before the opening. And right there, you saw the explosion, okay? I didn't even have a chance to even put in. I did see some, I did see some uh, targets up here on Einstein. Didn't even have time to draw them in. I went ahead and I exited right here. So my initial entry was at 55, 59. I got out of this as 57, 59. All right. Just a beautiful, beautiful move. All right. So then what happens? It came back down and then I got an HF1 setting up right here. Still on a, still on a buy and I went ahead and looked at book map again. Still saw that we have more potential to go on the upside. So what I did is I went ahead and I bought Right here at 5787. This one came in at 942. And I got out up here at, uh, let me see here. 5787. I got out at 5842. And about three or four minutes later. Okay. Didn't really want to hold on to it very long. So still, I was a little concerned about this coming down like this. I thought, well, maybe the high's already in place. So I really didn't want to hold on. I was just trying to pull a little bit more out of it, which is fine. And then as the afternoon started to develop here, there's a trade right here. All right. So then I got another pairing pattern by just a beautiful entry. I got in at 67.48. 67.48. And I had a target up here, and I'll show you. It was, I think it was at 70, well, let me see here. I think it was at 70, was it 70, 40? Yeah, it was right here. Uh, so, I'm sorry. It was at um, 71.25, 71.25. Once it hit 71.25 and it broke through, I went ahead and exited and I got out at 71.40, 71.40. That was it for me for the day. I didn't trade any more. I think it may have gone higher. Actually, no, it did not. So I pretty much got out close to the high on this move. And uh, this was all done through just two, two things, two simple things. One of four patterns setting up, and Einstein coming in and giving me those levels. All right, I mean... When it comes to trading, this is probably a very simplistic way, but everything has a logic behind it, all right? Uh, Einstein has a reason why Einstein works and why it continues to work, and been working for the last 36 years. Um, so, and it's an easier way of trading because you don't have a whole lot of stress looking at a lot of different things. So this is just a really great method to trade, whether you're trading um, indices, or you're trading futures, or you're trading stocks, Bitcoin, uh, anything, commodities, it's all Forex, it's all the same. Um, all, everything is typically, human behavior is gonna remain the same. We just wait for those patterns to set up, get into them, Einstein does its magic, and gives us those levels of the highest probability of hitting, and uh, and that's that's the process, folks. Okay, now keep in mind, Nothing is 100%. And number two, you can't blindly trade anything. This is not a mechanical system. By no means is it mechanical. Okay, so getting in is very easy. Subject, the subjective part of it is the levels. Do I want to take that first level? Or do I, am I willing to hold on, take a little bit more risk, and try to go for a farther level up with the idea that I may have to hold on to the trade for a while. All right? And... That's why I like looking at book map because it's, it shows me that order flow, shows me where the, the tickets are, and shows I mean shows me where the volume is, right? It shows me where that where the buyers and sellers are, so it gives us some um, assurance that we can hold on to a trade longer. But once again, the more you work with it, it really does get a lot easier to uh, to catch some of these big moves. All right, but keep in mind, if you're a new trader or even if you've been trading for a while. Anytime you use, whether it be my approach to trading or anybody's approach to trading, never trade with real money. Always start out with a simulator or a demo account until you can show yourself that you can be a profitable trader. Never trade with real money and never mirror me or anybody else. Don't blindly follow me or anybody else. You have to make your own decisions when it's come to trading, but I can certainly show you these tools uh, that I've been using for the last um, 36 years. 
uh, out, out of my 41 year career that has helped me uh, really fine tune my trading approach. Okay, so make sure you see that video at the end. We'll go a little bit more into one of the patterns and Einstein. And things are heating up. I like it. Uh, we're slowly seeing a lot of things picking up here. So next week should probably also be a really good week. So looking forward to that. And everybody have a great weekend. If you have any questions, you can always go to my YouTube channel, Innovative Trading Strategies, or my website, InnovativeTradingStrategies.com. If you'd like to get a hold of my watch list, I do put out a watch list and I narrow it all down if you'd like to get a hold of that. Uh, for just $50 a month, you can join my uh, Discord channel. Uh, you'll have access. You'll be able to watch me trade these. You'll be able to watch to see which ones on my watch list I'm, I'm jumping into, uh, what I'm trading, where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out. And uh, there's a lot of good information out there. And uh, you can do that now. It's simply $50 a month. No obligation to stick around. But I think once you see what we can do, I think you're going to be convinced that this is a really good way of trading these markets. And um, it certainly simplifies the whole process. Okay. Everybody have a great weekend. See you next week. All right. Well, I forgot to show you the, uh, the end of the day recap. Got too excited about my day that I forgot to go over this. So once again, Mini Russell, not much. So like I said, only in the I traded $66. But look at VFS. Man, what a great day on VFS. Uh, JDST was a carryover, add a little bit on that, got out, made a little bit of money on that, GNS, I wasn't really doing anything, got out of that, took my profit, uh, I'm still carrying over YANG, which I put on, and I'm okay with that, it's YANG, very similar to JDST, just a slow mover, and MYSE, still on that. And that's going to do it. So anyway, that's uh, that's how we're going to wrap up today. Great week, and hopefully we'll see everybody Monday morning. Take care.